Well, next this morning, we're talking to award-winning filmmaker Mark Wan and London MC actor and musician Janoy Cranston about their new film, I Am Who. And the film came as a result of a school visit when Mark Wan was so taken away by the younger MC's spoken performance, he vowed to make a film of it one day, and he has. Let's take a quick look. Who? <laughs> Stop me on my way. Cause that same brother that you killed in ten years could be curing you while you're ill. Lord, we need to pray. Like up in the air. Who could run like Jesse Owens? Who could kick like Pele? It's not clean on the streets. Another angry dad. Mum's crying now her son's dead. It's not clean on the streets. You got to be a G. There's another knife pushed in. Another child to feed. Wake up as in the street. The silent chasing guys. You can see what I see. I am him. And Mark and John, I uh, join me now. It looks pretty gritty stuff, actually. We'll talk about the film in just a minute. First of all, I'd like to know how you two met, because it was quite a chance meeting, really. Mark, do you want to tell the story? Yeah, um, I, I, I do lots of motivational speaking. Um, I unfortunately had a tragedy in my family where my niece lost her other half to knife, knife crime. And I'm a do-it type person, so I thought, you know, how can I affect change? So I, I went out to discuss with youngsters how to better themselves and um, how to do, to go from nothing to something. Um, I come from inner city estate and I won a BAFTA in 2006. So that was part of why I'd go out and do motivation mm. talks. I went along to a, a Black History event and Janoy was the keynote speaker. And I didn't know this, I was the keynote speaker, but Janoy did I Am Who there and he got an standard evasion. So I was thinking, how am I going to follow this? Um, <laughs> So yeah. after I did the talk, I went and found him, his mother and his father, and I said, if there's an opportunity to create I Am Who as a moving image piece so that the world can benefit from what I just saw you do, I'm going to make it happen. So that's so, the story behind how we became friends. A keynote speaker. You look quite young to me. I mean, how old were you at the time? Uh, 14. I was 14 at the time. Well, I was 14 when I wrote it, but I was 15 once I performed it. So, and uh, does that surprise people, do you think? Because I'm quite surprised that a keynote speaker uh, at, at the age of 14, and you were obviously blown away, Mark, by what he was saying and how, and how you were delivering it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that people expect a certain thing to come out of your mouth, so to speak, or a certain thing from you, and you totally shock them? Um, all the time. Um, I, don't, I feel like they don't expect it just simply because of, of my age, and they don't feel like we're n um, naturally we're mature enough to portray that kind of picture. Um, coming from an inner city London um, person, um, a child. Um, so it, it kind of took them uh, aback that I was able to paint that kind of picture, um, knowing that they're used to associating a 14-year-old um, black child um, as a criminal or, you know, uh, some kind of young offender or felon or something like that. So it was nice to know that I gave them a different, yeah. you know, so yeah. tell me about I Am Who then, what inspired it? I mean, you, uh, you must have seen quite a bit of life. Um, yeah, growing up in a, a, a council estate wasn't as easy um, as growing up anywhere but else. But some real but life experiences though. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I actually, we actually lost somebody on our, on our estate um, around the time that I Am Who was produced. And it kind of just spurred me to write something to give the whole of London uh, the outlook of somebody that was primarily actually in the you know the hub that they that the media decided to to capitalize on um, I feel like they didn't hear it from a primary source so I just decided to take upon myself to actually write the report of a 14 year old that actually lived within it so sort of two uh, grief has really brought you together because you're inspired Absolutely. by grief it's a terrible thing but it does inspire you you sort of soul search don't you you want to bring it out somehow mm. so I am who certainly inspired you to make this film Absolutely. Um, how does it translate to the screen do you think I've I've well, we was at the Buff uh, Film Festival yesterday where it was screened. Now, this is an amazing film festival because it gives uh, people Absolutely. a real platform, doesn't it? Platform is the operative word, definitely. Um, what they've done for I Am Who has been fantastic. Um, not only are they championing me as a director, they're championing Janoy, they're pushing the film. Um, I, the, the unexpectedness that I got when I first saw it happened last night, so it translates to the audience totally. 
Um, I think using uh, uh, graphics and the visuals to support the words, um, you don't get that in the, the live performance of it, so it gives it an actual another dimension. Mm -hmm. So the translation to screen is even more impactful. It's even, it makes it even bigger, and, and you sit sitting in a, a cinema with surround sound, and at that time I pulled in all the favors for my friends to get 5.1 surround sound on it, so it's got Dolby digital sound. So the experience is quite overwhelming. And an independent film as well, so in Absolutely. a sense you have a free reign. We're talking to a couple of guys yesterday who were directors and writers again with films in, in, in this film festival, this urban film festival, and they said to have a free reign is very important. You're not restricted by anybody, and it's so important to get the story out there. Absolutely, because it, it allows us to do it uh, uh, from its pure source, and it doesn't have any preconceptions, so we can tell the exact story to the exact audience we want to, and with this film, we wanted to increase the production values so that that audience would encompass all audiences. Um, I originally saw it at Black History Month, mm. and it tended to be focused to the black community, but I thought that every community could benefit from a 14-year-old saying such powerful words. So if we get the production values into this film, everyone will benefit from it. It's relevant to every community and everyone, really, Absolutely. isn't it? Very educational Absolutely. film. Um, how do you think, Janoy, that I Am Who has been related into this film. I mean, how do you feel that your, the words that you wrote um, come across in this film? Are you pleased with it? Oh, completely. Um, funny enough, I remember meeting Mark um, just shortly after I performed it, and he promised to... Uh, he said he was going to make this, 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 this short film, this visual, and even as a child, I, I couldn't see how he could have done that. I literally was just... I had no... Um, direction for it, no ambition for it. It was literally just, uh, like I said to you, a report um, almost. And um, to see it kind of come to fruition, to, to, to come to light and to affect so many people, um, you know, it's come a long way. It's a beautiful thing to, you know, literally have just written something from, you know, something that felt right in my heart. Um, so, yeah. So, so, so to interrupt, so even being here today yeah. is phenomenal. For me. Knowing that it was just something he pen and inked based on how he felt or what was going on in his area. And I, when I heard it, um, I, as I said, at the time I was working at BBC, I could see the vision. I was like, oh, if we can get this right mm. and translate what I've just seen you perform to screen, everyone will enjoy it and it will, the message will resonate. You know. Gang culture is an overriding theme in this as well, isn't it? How important is it, do you think, that people view that, see it and understand it? I think it's exceptionally important because it, it's something that currently has been... Um, it's not in the media focus because there are, are, are more important stories at the moment but it's still going on. So, so a lot of the work I do, like I Am Who forms part of an anti-violence initiative that I, I created. Um, so I think it's, it's important that people still address the issue. Um, there are youngsters that are falling into that negative lifestyle, so we have to still keep a spotlight on it. Um, but we don't have to do it in a negative way. We can do it using media or dance or whatever the formats are. Um, so it's totally still relevant. It's still going on, um, and every now and again, it, Pop, it, its head pops above the surface with an extreme case, but there are lots of little things that are still going on, and this is how we address it. How, have you been pretty overwhelmed about the response to this? I mean, what, what, what do you think people will get from it? Because, I mean, personally, I go to the cinema to relax, chill out, and sort of like, just sort of... I, I don't want to be challenged, really. I just <laughs> want to enjoy yeah. something. And in a sense, you're challenging people with this, aren't you? Absolutely. I think, I think um, when... What I saw when I was doing it as a director, I saw that lots of the youth watch MTV and their MTV generation, so you can't con them with stuff that doesn't have high production values. So our primary audience was them, and it was for them to get excited by it and feel that, you know what, I can do that, mm. and I can get involved in that, and I, I've got this little skill, and I didn't realise from a little poem I could make a big theatrical piece. So. It's not really a cinema-going film, even though we viewed it in the cinema. Yeah. It's more to capture that young mind and go, I can do that. I'm excited by that. And it's not just a music video. There's a piece of um, poetry that you can take something from. Mm -hmm. So that's the most important thing. It is to get you thinking. And Jano, how do you think of yourself? I mean, you are an inspiration to others. How do mm -hmm. you feel about that? Um... <laughs> yeah, to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, <laughs> um, I, I still feel like I'm amongst them. You know, I still live around them. Uh, so uh, even to the point where I've actually experienced, um, ironically, ended up experiencing uh, and being a victim of uh, gang culture. Um, so it kind of took me aback and kind of humbled me to know that at 14, even though I had not experienced personally experienced anything, that 
to experience it in time, I still live around it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it still is very much... Um, it's still very much... It's still prevalent. It's still, pre yeah. Yeah. It's still, yeah. it's still it's, prevalent. You know, so being, so being a, a role model is... Yeah. It's actually, you're actually the living, walking, you're it, you're breathing it. Yeah. I'm going to have to stop you there, but okay. I am who. It <laughs> okay. sounds wonderful. I urge anyone to go and see it. And I thank you both, Mark and Janoy, for coming in to talk to us about it here thank on this day live. Thank you. It's time for another short break. Um, do stay with us here on Arise News. You're watching This Day Live.